This is Beyond the Big Screen Podcast with your host, Steve Guerra. Here is another Beyond the Big Screen teaser for episodes coming soon. I hope you enjoy and definitely tune in for the full episodes. If you want to learn more, you can head over to beyondthebigscreen.com. You can support Beyond the Big Screen on Patreon and Subscribestar. By joining on Patreon and or Subscribestar, you can help keep Beyond the Big Screen going and get many great benefits. Benefits include advertisement-free content, bonus content, and early access. The bonus content is great, too. I will feature outtakes from episodes and live streaming episodes. If you join at the executive producer level, you will become just that, an executive producer of Beyond the Big Screen. You will be able to develop ideas for upcoming episodes, help find great guests, and of course have your name mentioned at the beginning or end of each episode. You won't just be a supporter, you will be a critical member of the team. Go over to patreon.com forward slash beyond the big screen or subscribestar.com forward slash beyond the big screen to learn more. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, send me an email to my email address, steve at a2zhistorypage.com or follow us on social media by searching for A2Z History. I will see you next time beyond the big screen. Are people happy? Do you think people are happy? Are you happy? (laughs) Well, okay. I think that, um, you know, when, when we ask people whether they're happy these days, they tend to give, they tend to say yes in lower numbers than ever before. Now, it varies enormously according to how you ask the question. You may only get 33% if you say, are you happy? You may get 90% if you say, are you satisfied with, with your personal life? So I don't think that we can take those numbers too seriously, but it does look from that and many other things talking with people, interacting with strangers at the bus stop. When I teach my students, I have the impression that although some people, although most people have some share in happiness, not many are simply happy. And there's a good deal of brokenness and misery out there. And I, I think this is on the rise. As I said, you can't necessarily take it seriously when people, what, what people say to, in answer to a survey question. But on the other hand, suicide rates are going way up. All kinds of other indicators uh, suggest that people are, people are having a problem. People are having a problem. Now, you also asked, am I happy? Well, let's distinguish between having a good time and having a good life. As the philosopher Mortimer Adler once did, I'm having a good time talking to you. I'm not always having a good time. Like everybody else, I have better days and I have worse days. I have, I have, I know the difference between leading a good life and not. I was, when I was a young man, I was desperately unhappy and, and uh, at one point really wanted to die. But, um, but I am, I am uh, by God's grace living a a good life now. I am, uh, and um, so I don't think that I'm. I'm not a sage or a guru, but I. I don't think that I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm being uh, an imposter and writing a book about happiness. And you really would say that, uh, just to kind of lay out the the goalpost, sort of that happiness. You could go through a good chunk of your day being unhappy at situationally, but in overall be happy and that there's kind of a hierarchy of happiness. Well, there's, yeah, let's, you're, the, the thing is that. Long time period. What was maybe the, the early phase, what led into the Victorian era well, there was a period, I think, of relative decadence um, among Victoria's uncles. She succeeded one uncle, William IV, um, who hadn't expected ever to be king. He was the younger brother of George IV. George IV, of course, was uh, a regency rake. I mean, he was the regent after whom the regency was named. And he had a very loose private life. Um, so did his brother William, who married an actress um, illegally uh, while he was technically married to somebody else. 
and um, neither of them had any surviving legitimate children. William had an awful lot of illegitimate children, but they weren't allowed to succeed to the throne. And so when he died uh, in 1837, and he, unlike his elder brother, George IV, had been a popular king, um, it was his 18-year-old niece, Victoria, who succeeded him. Her father had been called the Duke of Kent. He'd been a, another younger brother of George IV, and he died um, about 15 years earlier, uh, leaving her, after her uncle William died, the heir to the throne. And obviously, as a very young girl, I mean, she was 18 years old when she became queen, she was very much in the hands of her advisors. And her advisors, notably Lord Melbourne at that time, who was her first prime minister, but then after 1841, Sir Robert Peel, had both uh, come to maturity and had served the country under George IV as regent, under George IV as king, and under William uh, IV as king. And they were used to a very different way of doing things. Thank you.